Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to give you guys some options for houseplants that thrive under bright or intense light conditions. So these are perfect if you are working with a west or south facing window in your home as those are the directions that provide the most sunlight, specifically if you are in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, north and south are switched, so these will be better suited for a north or west facing window in your case. And I really did want to take care to not pick anything that you would find in your succulent or cacti selection at your local houseplant stores because I feel pretty confident if you go to your local houseplant store or nursery and you ask somebody who works there what's going to be perfect for your space that has a little too much sunlight for many other houseplants, they are going to point you to the cacti and succulent selection. And I would like to make things a little bit more interesting today. So these are all plants that you're going to find in the foliage selection at your houseplant stores. And on top of that, I really did try hard to pick plants that are going to be very accessible and inexpensive enough. So I feel confident that if you do go to your local houseplant store, you'll find a good percentage of the ones that I'm going to talk about today. So the first one I want to talk about today is this little cutie right here. And this is actually a very small example of this houseplant, but this right here is a Schefflera uh, Actinophylla Dazzle, but I would like to extend this selection in my video to be all Schefflera because Schefflera really across the board really handle intense light very, very well. The common name for Schefflera is umbrella plant, and you can probably get that vibe from just looking at these leaves right here. And as I was saying, this is a variety of Schefflera actinophylla, which is known for its larger leaves. As I was saying, this is a very small example of the plant, but I will put on screen uh, some of the other examples of Schefflera that I have in my home, Schefflera actinophylla specifically, including the Amate, which is a just standard green glossy leaf version that has those large leaves that I was mentioning, as well as the Nova, which is one of my favorite house plants that I grow in my home that has some really lovely jagged leaves but they all sport this that similar palmate leaf shape where they're all kind of coming out from a center point and just have a bunch of little leaflets around which I really enjoy. There is another type of Schefflera that's a great contender for bright light that I don't grow in my home so unfortunately I don't have an example to share with you guys on screen today. That one's referred to as Schefflera arboricola also commonly called an umbrella tree or umbrella plant and that is a very common house plant. You're going to find it at practically every house plant store even grocery store or hardware store as it's everywhere and that one specifically sports um, some smaller leaves than the actinophylas that I'm talking about today so they probably look pretty much dead on like my little baby actinophylla that I'm sharing on screen today but they're just so fun I really enjoy seeing just these little tiny woody trunks with these fun palmate leaves growing off the top I think it's a lot of fun and if you are in a tropical climate I wouldn't be surprised if you see this growing in the landscaping as it takes very well to intense light why I'm talking about it today and they're also very easy to shape so they'll commonly use them as like bushes or hedges um, in tropical climates. So I think that's pretty cool, but I really like growing these as a houseplant. I think the palmate leaves uh, really separate it from the rest. And there are a bunch of examples, some with small leaves, some with large leaves, as I was saying. So there's a lot to choose from. It really does add a different element to the home. And if you are looking for a fun foliage plant for a bright light space, I think this is a really excellent option. One that also grows in kind of a similar manner in the sense that it grows like a tree or you can grow it like a tree is this ficus right here so this one specifically is a ficus elastica teneki teneki i never know how to pronounce it correctly but this is just a variegated rubber tree and i think this is a really excellent house plant for bright light i think the worst thing you can do is give this too little light as these variegated leaves will quickly get some brown edging to them if they aren't getting enough light and i will say in my earlier days of growing house plants this is one that i always just wanted to put it in any spot in my home that it looked perfect because these leaves are a literal work of art but it would never flourish and like i was saying it would get those brown edges on the leaves the bottom leaves would turn yellow as it just wasn't photosynthesizing enough enough and that's very sad because similar to like a calathea or a stromanthe these leaves are so beautiful that once they just get a little bit of brown on them I think their appearance dwindles very very quickly and it just it doesn't look as perfect as it does when it just has absolutely no blemishes on it. Ficus have a bit of a reputation for being finicky houseplants to grow and while this isn't the easiest houseplant on planet earth 
I can happily report that this is one of the easiest ficus that I've ever grown. Typically the finer leaved ficus, ficus benjamina for example, are ones that I've kind of grown a little wary of as they are creatures of habit and if you don't follow their routine they are known for just dropping leaves when you look at them. Ficus elastica on the other hand is one that you can kind of gauge when it's ready to water it. It's not one that you have to just stick to a routine. So if you're over watering your ficus elastica, uh, you're going to notice that the lower leaves on the plant are going to start turning yellow. They might get some brown spots on them or brown edging and completely turn brown over time and fall off or they'll turn yellow and fall off. This can also just happen over time as the plant's aging. So if it's just one at a time, I wouldn't worry. You can see, for example, this leaf down here is starting to get a little bit of brown on it. As it's been on the plant for a while, it's starting to get tired and eventually it will fall off as these leaves have as well. So this is more of a concern if it's something that's happening alarmingly quickly or maybe like two or three or four leaves are turning yellow and brown at the same time. So that is probably the best telltale sign that you're overwatering your ficus. And in that case, I would just recommend Obviously not watering it, but perhaps moving it to a brighter location or a more uh, well air circulated location. I don't know the word I'm looking for somewhere where the air circulation is better so that this plant can dry out a little bit faster and you can avoid root rot. And if you're not watering this plant enough, the leaves will get kind of wilty. They're usually very succulent, so they will lose some of that succulence. You can't quite use my taco test on them, but you'll be able to kind of feel in these leaves that they lost a little bit of their normal um, thickness and they will kind of wilt a little bit. You don't want to go too far. If you find this plant completely wilted, I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to drop a couple of leaves and doesn't recover very well or quickly. I'm sure it will recover, but it's not like a pothos where it's just going to perk back up in a day's time. So you do want to be a little bit more mindful. These still do kind of carry that creature of habit element that most ficus carry, but uh, this one is much easier to care for in my opinion, which is fantastic because I often say that some of the most beautiful house plants are the most difficult to grow, but I still think this is a very easy house plant and definitely one of the most beautiful ones that I grow in my home. I mean, that foliage is just killer and the, the ruby version isn't one to knock either. I have this little guy right here that I'm very excited about. I feel like I don't talk about air plants that often on my videos, but I really, really enjoy air plants and they're something that I've found a lot of success with in the past year. I feel like in my earlier gardening days, I would kill air plants all the time. I just didn't understand how to grow them. And that's because I was treating them like the inanimate objects that we think they are. So this one in particular is a Tillandsia tectorum. And this is really one of my favorite air plants. If I get a little bit closer with the camera, hopefully it is focusing. You can see how fuzzy these leaves are. The entirety of this plant is covered in little silver hairs, which are referred to as trichomes, that when watered will fall back to the surface of the leaves and kind of reveal the green color of this plant so you'll often see like time lapses of this plant drying out as it really is quite something if I can find mine I'll put it on screen for you guys to see and as the video suggests this is really an excellent bright light house plant. This is probably the air plant that I found the most success with over the last year as it really is just so simple to grow as long as you're giving it enough light, which I have to admit kind of baffled me at first because you look at a plant like this and you wouldn't really expect it to do well under bright light conditions. You look at these little leaves and you kind of think it would fry under those conditions. But once I did a little bit of research about this plant, I learned that it does grow in xeric conditions in the wild, meaning that it's growing in conditions that lack moisture and often have more sunlight. So you can kind of also read that about this plant having much more of a silver whitish color. And my rule of thumb with air plants is that the greener the air plant, the less light they require. The more white the foliage on the air plant, the more light that they require. So some other examples of air plants that require more sunlight are Tillandsia xerographica and Tillandsia streptophylla, both fantastic air plants. But those have much thicker foliage in comparison to this Tectorum, which has much thinner foliage, much more reminiscent of a Tillandsia ionantha, which is a very common air plant as well that has green foliage. That is one that you'll definitely be growing in lower light conditions as that one would certainly fry under the conditions that I'm growing this uh, Tectorum. But this is just such a niche air plant. I love the fuzziness to it. It's one that 
costs a little bit more than other air plants, but not much more. And I wouldn't even be surprised if some houseplant stores are just throwing this in their air plant selection and selling them at the same price as everything else, because sometimes some stores don't know better, but if they look at their invoice, they'll see that this guy costs a little bit more, even at a smaller size, but it's just such a beautiful air plant. If you have struggled with air plants in the past and you have enough light, try one of these out. You'll be surprised. And I think you're going to find the joy in growing air plants that I have found over the last year, because this is quite frankly, the one that has sparked the love for me and I'm so excited to try more out but this is probably always going to be my favorite one because it, it looks beautiful as is and then when I water it I find a new appreciation for it watching it just dry out it's really so incredible I absolutely love it and I should mention real quick I've been holding it by these little rootlets back here so these roots do nothing uh, for the plant other than allow it to grab onto a surface. So if it was in nature and it was grabbing onto like the rocky crags that it's growing in, that's what they're for. Or you could use them to like attach them to a mount if you're mounting it in your home, if you don't want to just set it on something, but um, they are not collecting nutrients. All of the nutrients comes from the leaves. As I was saying, I just kind of soak these house plants like every two weeks or so, specifically this one because it requires less water, but some other air plants like the greener ones, I should be watering at least once a week just to put out there. But um, let's see, I'm going to talk about this lovely guy next. This is really such a beautiful houseplant. So this is a Peperomia Hope, and I know it's a little bit more succulent, but this is definitely one that you would find in the Peperomia selection in your houseplant stores, which is the more foliage selection. But I'm just absolutely obsessed with the manner in which this plant grows. I love these round silver dollar shaped leaves and the way it just spills out of the pot. You might recall if you've been watching my videos that this was a lot longer at one point. I did have this growing in a south facing window hanging up in the window in my old apartment and it was like six feet long at the time. However, when I moved, it's not very simple to move a plant that's so delicate like this, that's six feet long. So I decided very painstakingly to uh, cut it back but I also did that to allow me to grow it on my shelf that I have behind me here because obviously it wouldn't really fit at six feet. So this is much more manageable and I've seen what this plant can do um, in a small amount of time, which is surprising because this is a very slow growing plant to start, but this is kind of one of those plants that definitely falls into the adage, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. So I've had this plant for probably three or four years now at this point. And when I purchased it, I got it as just a tiny little two inch pot barely had any plant on it. It was probably two little vines that were poking out that had maybe like six to eight leaves on the plant total. And this plant just exploded over the last couple years, of course, slowly but surely. And one of the tips I have for you if you are growing this peperomia or really any peperomia in general or any succulent too, any succulent counts for this too. If one of the leaves on this plant pops off or say you just kind of accidentally knock one off when you're messing with the plant, just take the leaf and shove it back in the soil. And in a couple months time, you're gonna have some new vines pop out. That's actually why my plant is so full now because every time I knocked one off in the old apartment, I would just shove it back in the plant and some new babies would come out and you can see how full this plant is now. It's kind of hard to imagine this being just two little vines coming out of this planter because that's literally what it was a couple years ago. This is a plant that really thrives in bright light conditions. I am trying this out under my shelf now because I'm lacking some of those frying windows that I have, so I have to make do with grow lights now in my new apartment, but this plant just possesses such an excellent vibe and it's such an amazing contender for a trailing house plant in your bright windows. Maybe you're a little bored of string of pearls or string of bananas, or you want something with a little bit more meat to it that's still gonna trail in a really excellent manner. This is an excellent pick. It really gives me like that Zerosikyos Dengai, that sounds like gibberish, but the silver dollar vine uh, energy, but it, it's a much more relaxed where that plant's kind of more up and spindly and reaching out everywhere. This one just kind of falls and forms a really nice curtain of plant. I'm really excited to watch this one grow now that I've cut it back because it's just a little bit more tame, a little less scraggly, but I'm still expecting this plant to do just as well and just fill out even more. Like, oh, look at that. That's so fantastic. Like I've said so many times already, I'm just in shock at how full this plant is in comparison to what it was a couple years ago. Back when I got my hands on this plant, it was only sold in small quantities, so really tiny pots, but nowadays I'm sure you can find hanging baskets in your local houseplant stores that are spilling over the edge and ready to hang up in your south or west facing windows and ready to flourish. I would recommend moving them to a terracotta or a porous planter, as you can probably read from this plant that if you overwatered this or didn't give it enough light that it would rot very quickly. 
Uh, so I would recommend that. But honestly, as long as you're giving this plant enough light, I think you'll do okay. I think that's the most important thing. As far as the watering goes, I'm probably watering this house plant like every 10 to 14 days as I have had it for a while. So I know how lackadaisical I can be with it. If I am not watering this plant enough, the leaves will kind of just pucker up a little bit. They'll get a little bit shriveled and I'll go ahead and water it and it'll plump back up in a day or two's time. On the other end of the spectrum, as I was saying, if you are overwatering this house plant, it's very quick to drop some leaves that will turn brown and yellow and gross and kind of rot a little bit. Maybe you'll lose a couple stems. So it's always better to err on the underwatering side of this plant and practically all plants, all the ones I'm talking about today, definitely are happier with underwatering than overwatering. And let's see, I got one more plant to talk about today. Thank goodness, because it's starting to heat up in here a little bit. It's a hot day outside. So this is a Hoya. This one right here in specific is a Hoya Macrophylla Albo Marginata. It's a really, really beautiful Hoya. I absolutely love the venation that these leaves get, the little white outer ring that it has, and how large the leaves are. There's really a lot to love about this plant. There are absolutely a bunch of other Hoyas that are perfect for growing in bright, intense light conditions, and wow, these leaves are dusty. I really need to clean these leaves off. I cleaned everything off when I moved to my apartment, but it's been a couple months now, and now the dust is caking back on, so I really got to have a little dusting party this week. But um, I wanted to talk about Hoya macrophylla alba marginata specifically today because it is probably the Hoya I found the most success with growing in intense light conditions. So in my old apartment, I was growing this in south and west facing windows. In my current apartment, I am growing this one underneath a grow light now, and I have another one that I'm growing in my east facing window. And I wanted to hold this one today because it's a little bit more manageable than the other one, but uh, the other one does have some really nice sun stressing that the leaves have formed. If I remember, I'll put a little footage of it on screen, but it just looks so nice how the leaves kind of get nice and red, but those veins kind of stay a little bit pronounced and the, the variegation also. So I really enjoy it. It's a really, really nice Hoya. Not only does the foliage look fantastic, green, but once it gets that little bit of stressing to it, it looks fantastic red as well. So I absolutely love it. And it's kind of nice seeing large leaf Hoyas. I remember this Hoya was kind of new on the market maybe like two years ago, and I'm sure the hype's died down a little bit. Maybe the prices come down as well a little bit, which would be very nice. But um, my love for it has not died down at all. I absolutely love these large leaves. There's just so much to love about this plant, as I was saying. And it's so nice seeing them sold in large plants. Like I am used to seeing Hoyas on like Etsy sold as like two leaf cuttings for a lot of money, but it's really nice when you do get to go to your local houseplant store and find such full Hoyas that really do have such nice characteristics to them and it not cost the entirety of your bank account. <laughs> Hoyas, in my experience, do take a little bit of time to get going, so they probably also follow that first year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap adage that I spoke of earlier. So do be patient, although people always comment on my videos saying how fast their Hoyas are growing, and I wish I had that same experience, to be honest, but uh, this is one I think I've had for like maybe a year or two, and it's really just starting to spit out a lot of growth, as you can see. It's definitely picking up for the growing season, so I'm excited to see how it's looking by the end, but Hoyas are just such easy houseplants to grow. You don't you really need to pay that much mind to them. You water them like every week, maybe like every 10 days. If they're getting a lot of light, you might need to pay a little bit more mind to them, or if you're growing them in sphagnum mosses, some people do. Uh, but in soil, you just pay them a little bit of mind. Maybe you see the leaves are starting to pucker a little bit, like I was saying with the Peperomia Hope, and you go ahead and give it some water. And similar to the Ficus Elastica, if you are watering your Hoyas too much, maybe you're gonna notice that some of those older leaves are gonna turn yellow and quickly fall off. So just a couple troubleshooting methods for you and your Hoyas. But honestly, with your Hoyas, you go ahead and put them in a really bright window and just let them do their thing. You don't wanna completely fry them at first, but like I was saying, Macrophylla seems to be one that really takes well to the bright light conditions. I have put Hoyas directly in like a west or south facing window and had them kind of blister a little bit so use your own best judgment there but this is one I feel guaranteed that you put it in a bright window and it's just going to flourish. 
once they grow enough, you can get a nice little bamboo hoop or make a little bamboo teepee out of a couple of bamboo sticks and then start to train the plant around and you can really form such a nice plant that really can just be the standout of your windowsill. And then once it gets enough light and gets large enough, they start to bloom and the blooms of Hoyas are these wonderful little clusters of flowers that they often refer to as porcelain flower or wax flower because of their waxy porcelain -y appearance, which are just absolutely gorgeous. I have had macrophylla bloom for me once or twice but I haven't gotten to enjoy it in its fullest potential as I feel like it's only put up a couple of flowers but I'm feeling very hopeful with this macrophylla that in a year or two's time I'm going to have a really beautiful uh, hoop of macrophylla or a little trellis or something going on and maybe it'll be covered in blooms and beautiful red veiny leaves once I uh, have to move this out from underneath the grow light because it is starting to kind of overgrow its space a little bit and I'll have to go ahead and move into one of my east facing windows once I get it all set up. And I'm sure if you go on Instagram you can see some really beautiful examples of Hoyas that are grown on trellis settings because it really is uh, quite the vibe. It's so different than seeing them as trailing houseplants and I actually think I like it a little bit more. So, it's heating up in here. It's time to cut off today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Houseplants that are for bright, intense light conditions. So as I said, south or west facing windows, or if you are in the southern hemisphere, north or west facing windows. And I will continue on videos like this. So I do want to do uh, plants for medium light. So east and west facing windows, and then lower light conditions. So east or north facing windows. So stay tuned for those. But as I said, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.